Hi, I'm Roni. Hi, I'm Lizzie, and this is the, the recruitment, recruitment Aversion. This is a new podcast um, that's going to focus on recruitment and the love-hate relationship that everyone has with it. We'll be focusing on the recruitment industry from the perspective of recruiters themselves, employers, and from candidates. So, Roni, tell us, what is the Recruitment Aversion? The Recruitment Aversion is a perception that people have of recruiters, whether that is well, recruiters themselves, but mainly employers and candidates, where they just have a sort of stereotype of recruiters and they don't really want to deal with them. Yeah, and I think we notice that a lot because we're both fairly new to the recruitment industry. So what I mean, I've been with about six months now. And I think I'm five. Yeah, so when we both joined, obviously from sort of you just graduated, I'm still doing my degree. And we kind of both had similar things from friends and family, didn't we, about joining yeah um I think because sometimes recruitment isn't always seen as a natural career path no exactly and I studied English lit so I think people expected me to go into journalism or editing or something like that so I think for them they didn't see it as a legitimate career path yeah I had it from some people because I'm studying business management and finance as well and people were like well we thought you were going to be an accountant (laughs) why are you now going to be a recruiter and I was like well you know (laughs) I'm going to try it um but I think and it's the stigma of sort of people being like well recruitment's not really a career and they think it's easy as well yes. I think, but it's not it's... it really is challenging and there's so many elements to it as well 100%. and I do feel like I am utilizing the skills I learned at uni so yeah. I do think it is a valid career choice for a graduate no definitely and I think because of all the sort of processes that we deal with obviously like the communication skills organization everything that we do and it is like it's a tough gig it is. it's so it stressful as well some days isn't it and you're literally yeah. you sit down and then you're just there and before you know it it's the end of the day yep. and you're like oh my god I'm so stressed it's an emotional roller coaster definitely yeah. you've got the the highs which are really good but then you do have the lows and and candidates dropping out and things like that you you can't control everything which is why it does require skill to try and manage things because definitely. in other roles I think people compare recruitment to sales and things like that but yeah. we are selling people so it's difficult to manage something that you can't control yeah because it's not a sort of continuous product it's not going to be the same every time yeah. people obviously are unique in their different ways of managing things and sort of how they're going to react to different things so I think it is it is quite interesting but I think that's why we wanted to do this podcast isn't it to sort Definitely. of talk about how recruitment is perceived from both an, a candidate and um, an employer side of things and sort of discuss all the awkwardness yeah. surrounding it. <laughs> so how did you find your first few weeks and obviously going in with your friends and family's perception of recruitment? Did you think that sort of bled into your first couple of weeks? Definitely. I think because everyone had been like, that's not a proper career. What do you mean you're just going to sit and talk to people all day? <laughs> and I was like, obviously within my first few days, I was like, well, clearly it's not just that. I'm speaking to clients, candidates, searching, I'm making appointments, like it's crazy. And I was like, it's From them saying that, it kind of like dulled down my confidence a bit to that it was actually going to be something worthwhile. But then, so my first few weeks, and then I was lucky enough to make a placement after my first few weeks. And I remember the feeling when I was like, when um, when they said, "Oh yeah, we'd like to offer your candidate the job," and I was like, I was so (laughs) excited. I was like, I've got, I've got a placement. And then that buzz is just like it's it's like no other. And you and you know now as well what it like what it's like. Exactly. How did you feel when you came in? At first, I think I just felt like I was almost like an irritant. Like when I was calling people, they're like, "Why is she calling me?" Because I think you know, going in with other people's perceptions and and the recruitment aversion, Mm -hmm. I felt like. I was almost like a problem, but you don't realize you're actually a problem solver for the candidate and the employer. So I think once I started having those conversations and and speaking to people when they were seeing what I was offering them, it made me realize, oh no, I'm actually providing value. I'm not annoying. I'm not, you know, causing problems. I'm actually solving everyone's problems. So yeah, yeah, I think, I think that helped once I actually, actually settled into it. Um, saw that it's not all that it's sort of made out to be and by the I, negative perception. I think you kind of, like you say, you realise your worth after a while. Because I'll hold my hands up, like before I came into recruitment, <laughs> you do, and someone would ring up and be like, hi, I'm calling from so-and-so agency. Yeah. Like, are you looking for a job? And I'd be like, oh, I don't know what to say to you. And people yeah. panic. Yeah. And it's like now that we fully understand the whole process of recruitment and obviously all the things that we have to do, it's like 
I kind of really try and promote now to candidates that we speak to, like, we're actually like your own personal little toolbox. Yeah, like, definitely. we can help you do everything. Definitely. And it's not, we're not this little pest that's just like, oh, let's throw you in somewhere and, and then we'll just take the fee and leave you forever. And I think that's why it's so important to have that personal connection with any candidates. You know, it's it's find out a little bit more about them, their personalities, yeah. their hobbies, things like that. And they can hear about you, but then they know, right, okay, this isn't just a recruiter, a salesperson, you know, that sort of thing. They know that you're a human trying to help them out. Yeah, and do you find as well when you have like because we do take the time to sit and talk to our clients clients candidates and get to know them properly <laughs> yeah. and stuff that then they are a lot more relaxed Definitely. so i'll get like yeah. whatsapp from my candidates and they're like putting all the emojis and they'll yeah. send me voice <laughs> notes yeah. and stuff i love it yeah. yeah and then at the end they're like thank you so much so like, you really took the time to be personal and everything and i'm like this isn't the end like yeah. keep in touch can yeah. like let me know because you've gen- because you've invested so much time and everything you are just genuinely interested to see how they're getting on Definitely. and and how they're sort of carrying on with everything how- i think that's the thing though i think people who have actually dealt with recruiters or at least good recruiters yeah they get rid of that recruitment aversion they realize what it's yeah. actually about so like how do you find working with say employers do you find that a lot of them do have the recruitment aversion a hundred percent i've sales isn't something that comes naturally to me um i've yeah i've not done i mean before recruitment i was like customer service background so obviously i'm used to speaking to people all the time i don't have a problem speaking to people but the the hard hitting sales kind of thing is is something that doesn't really come naturally to me but then it's realizing that it's not a hard hitting sales that we're having to do it's literally speaking to employers, like finding out what, what's going on with them and in the industry and things like that. Um, but I do find it difficult to try and get through to people and to get hold yes. of people. I mean, what's been your experience with it? I think it's exactly that. I think it's people who aren't willing to engage with you. You know, they'll never get over the recruitment aversion. They'll never yeah. see it for what it really is. Um, and then I've had clients who, you know, after a while of dealing with me, they say, oh, do you know what it's a breath of fresh air you know I didn't yes. expect you to be like this I didn't expect the process to be so thorough yeah. and you know the whole thing to be thought through so I think it is just one of those things you have to deal with a recruiter or at least a good recruiter once yeah and then all of those misconceptions are just gone yeah They're completely wiped out um and I think that is the case and I think it is the same for candidates because I have had some candidates who they want to deal with the company directly. They're like, well, who are you? Yeah. Like, you know, I've applied to this company. What's, What's your relevance? Have you had some like really awkward responses from candidates when you've rang? I have, I have. And and I think as well, because obviously we're, we're a small company, uh, we're not, you know, a, a large chain recruitment yeah. chain or anything like that. So if they haven't heard of us, they think, well, who are you? Yeah. I, I don't know who and you And you're always are. getting, you're like, it's Sterling Warrington, and they're like, who? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they don't realise, you know, that, you know, I, I'm actually representing the companies that you do know yeah um just because you haven't heard of me it doesn't mean it's a random job it's for a random company no. we do represent proper established big names and i think because we do take the time to sort of really get to know our clients as well and when we're taking the jobs on really understanding all the different things that they Definitely. want and going out on client visits and seeing yeah the whole picture because then as well going out on the client visits you get a real good idea of of where your candidates are going to be working and stuff so then when the candidates do come back with questions we can often answer them straight away. Yeah. And then the candidates kind of like, oh, okay, they do actually know exactly. what, what, exactly. they, what they're talking about. And I about. think in some ways it's a better approach than dealing directly with the company because, you know, we're sort of an outside perspective. We're seeing things from an unbiased perspective yeah. and we can tell them about it with a fresh set of eyes. If you're speaking to someone, a HR member, for example, they've been in the company a while, they might have certain... I suppose certain views that have been muddied by the fact that they've been there for years or maybe yeah. they'll see things better than they actually are because they have to promote it. Whereas, yeah. you know, we can choose who we work with and we choose who we represent. Um, and I think, you know, we are speaking to people with that fresh perspective and no, without anything in the background influencing. Yeah, because like you say, if someone has worked there for a while or also some people may do it where they're kind of choosing on who they'd hire rather than who the yeah. company would hire. Exactly. And because we ha- we do speak to so many different candidates, we can sort of cast a fresh set of eyes over it um, to sort of bring different people in. Um, So, yeah, it is. I mean, what do you think you've struggled with the most coming into it? I think just getting through to people in the first place because, you know, there are a number of people and it can be candidates, it can be clients who they're just not willing to make that first engagement. You know, you call them up or you shoot them an email and they say, 
oh, they're a recruiter, I'm not dealing with them. Yeah. Or, or you you know, you can see on job adverts that say, you know, no recruitment agencies. Please. I hate that. Yeah. And then, you know, they actually engage with you. They're like, oh, you know what? You filled that job and we would have struggled to fill it. And, oh, yeah. wow, it's been a great work with you. Thanks for coming down and seeing us. And, yeah. you know, they actually, once they actually get down to it, they enjoy it. But, you know, you can't provide that value that service to them until they actually engage with you yeah. so i think that is the hardest part just getting through in the first place and showing them that well we are different and we you know there are some bad recruiters out there everyone knows that but not every recruiter is like that so it's just sort of getting rid of that stereotype and sort of showing who we are yeah. and the value we and provide clearing the stigma of it all because like you say when people have dealt with bad recruiters previously they've almost been sort of scorned by it yeah and then I always try when I'm speaking to clients to be like, if they're like no agencies, I'll always try and be like, okay, so, but why? Like, yeah. can you what sort of explain it past? to me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just let me know what's going on. Yeah, like, let me see exactly. what we can do to help because it, it, it there's no reason why people, sh- like, we shouldn't be given a chance to sort of show what what we can do and it's not all about just getting someone in and filling the job. It's about really building a relationship exactly. with them. And providing value. That That's all it's yeah. about, you know, making their lives easier. Um, yeah definitely so that was the first podcast going forward we're going to be doing a weekly series focusing on all different aspects of recruitment yep. new episode every friday uh, we'd be really interested to hear from you you know we the aim of our podcast is to have those conversations people don't want to have or that people don't have so you know if there is anything that you would really be interested in hearing discussed that you don't hear being mentioned in the industry you know drop us a message we'd love to hear from you as awkward as it may be yeah. we're willing we're willing to <laughs> we do the dirty work <laughs> <laughs> so yeah subscribe um and, and keep yeah. up to date with what's going on <laughs>